Are you ready for the truth about the Roaring Fire Backpack? So, we've seen reviews on the internet of the Roaring Fire Backpack. Most of them have been positive. And there are a lot of good things about this $30 backpack that you can get from Amazon. Links in the description below. But let's talk about what you're actually getting. All right, here we go. Roaring Fire 30 liter backpack ordered directly from Amazon. I'm going to show you a couple things that uh, I don't like about the backpack and I'm going to show you some things that are good. So we'll start off with the material. The material on the outside is actually really nice. Uh, the webbing feels quality. Uh, the plastic on the buckles, I'm not sure. Jury's out on that. Um, you know, it may be okay. It may not. Uh, more thorough testing needs to be done on that. So you do have compression straps here on the top and on the sides. And you have a non-Fastex buckle. It is, you know, essentially a copy of a Fastex buckle. Uh, but it's not, you know, the genuine article. The zippers have zipper pulls in them, which is great. Uh, they seem to work pretty well. They are not YKK. They are not waterproof. So, a couple things. You've got a pouch here, pouch here, a second pouch, and the main pouch. You have an area in the back here, sternum strap, and this is supposedly a water bottle pouch, which we'll talk about in a little bit. And you have what appears to be molly webbing on the front, uh, which is not. And we'll talk about that as well. So first thing first, we'll open up the backpack. This pouch is uh, essentially like an admin pouch on the outside. It has some really nice uh, water-resistant uh, rubberized material on it, which is great because you don't want your stuff to get wet. And I've loaded this with just some supplies that I had on hand. Uh, this is by no means a uh, recommendation of how to pack it. I'm just kind of showing you kind of the things that will fit in it. So in here, I just have a rudimentary fire kit, some bug repellent, and you can see I've got my Leatherman folding knife, Olight, right in the rain pen, and a right in the rain pad. So that all fits in there nicely. And then I've also got some more room at the bottom, just some hard candies, cloth for my phone, and a headset. And then I've got a uh, four-way Silcock key so you can actually get water uh, if you need it from public areas. So that's pretty much it. it. It folds down enough that you don't lose everything. The one area that's missing in here is a key keeper. Uh, a lot of backpacks have that, so you can snap your keys on there. So no matter what happens, uh, your keys do not fall out. Uh, it's not the end of the world, but it would be a nice feature to have. So top part here is essentially big enough for sunglasses. Now, these are not full-size goggles. These are uh, like a child's airsoft goggle. Uh, I have a full pair of goggles in there, but they would not fit in here. Now, you can put your sunglasses in here. You can put your cell phone if it's small enough. If it's one of the big phablets, maybe not, but I think it'll probably fit most of what you have. It's not padded, so be careful. You know, make sure you have a case if you're going to put a phone in here or glasses. And again, same kind of rubberized material. Pretty simple. Two zipper pulls on the side. And then we'll go to the second pouch here on the outside. And this is, again, another three-quarter zipper pull down. Again, you can see that rubberized fabric really clear. And in here, I just have some medical stuff, boo-boo stuff like uh, sunscreen, some you know, Advil, ibuprofen, mosquito head net, some paracord, compass, space blanket, Israeli bandage, and a grab-and-go first aid kit. So this pouch um, will fit that, which is really nice. This is divided and it is mesh. So if you wanted to put something in here, you could do that and you can put something else on this side, like let's say you want to put your knife there. So it is divided, it's kind of nice. And then you've got this little pocket here. And keep in mind, you know, you've got from here to here, so you've got some depth in the pouch as well, even with it closed. So that's kind of nice. And then I'll zip this back up and we'll go to the main compartment. Now this is advertised as a 30 liter backpack. Maybe, maybe not, I'm not really sure. 
to be honest with you. I haven't measured it. And then again, you've got compression straps here. This opens up all the way. I don't know if you could see this really clear or not, but I got gloves in here. There's a mesh pocket, Sawyer filter, which is great. We'll do a review on this down the road as well. And then the main compartment. Now I just have a couple dust masks in here. I have a metal water bottle. The issue with this pack, one of the things I don't like is it does not have any pockets on the outside for a water bottle. Uh, I wish it did, it doesn't. So just keep that in mind. So if you're gonna not carry the water bottle on your uh, hip, you're gonna have to find a place for it in the pack. I usually don't like to put it inside the pack because this one's probably not gonna leak because it's stainless steel. But uh, if you have a plastic one, um, you know, I don't want my gear to all get wet. So got a hat, some paracord, a compass, second, second compass, wipes, lifeboat bar, because sometimes you just got to eat. And then, like I said before, I have a Shemog. And these are the goggles that will not fit in this pouch. They are just way too big. So again, sunglasses. That's about all you're going to get in there and a phone. So you got the Shemog. There's another zipper pocket here. And this is rubberized on the bottom. And, you know, it's about that deep. Goes to about right there. It's not bad. It's not going to hold anything heavy, but again, you probably don't want to. So that's essentially the inside of the pack and what you've got going on there. On this side, this is advertised as a water uh, bladder pouch. Now, it's on the outside. It almost seems like this is for a, uh, would be better suited for like a hard board for like a semi-rigid backpack or an internal frame backpack uh, that you see other people using. Having the water bottle here or the water bladder here, the thing I don't like about it, it's gonna bulge out and that's gonna be in the middle of your back. Um, this would be better if it was on the inside of the pack, in my opinion, and also your hose is exposed. There's really no ports or anything. I guess there's a, a loop. No, that's not even a, that doesn't even go all the way through. I didn't know what that's for to be honest with you, unless it's a port. Nope. Yeah, so it's not even a loop to go through. So I really don't like that feature. I do like this. Now the other weakness of the pack is these straps. They don't go up all the way. Um, these tend to dig into you right here. And uh, that's just no bueno. Now, this pack was about 30 bucks on Amazon. I think they're 29 and change, which is a great deal, provided you're willing to live with the things that I don't like. For me, this is going back. But let me just show you how they did the straps versus how I think they should have done the straps. This pack right here is another 30 liter pack, Walmart special, probably about the same price. The difference is, is in the strapping. This has almost a mystery ranch style to the curve. And you can see it's gusseted up here, it's attached together versus this separate contraption here. I don't know why they did this and why they didn't do this. Um, got the same material on both sides, same type of material here. Uh, and again, you know, I wouldn't use this as a three day pack either. This is uh, uh, my kids using this for school. So again, for 30 bucks, you know, probably wouldn't go with either one of them to be honest with you. But the, uh, but the straps, I, I just don't like this, it doesn't fit well. Also, if you're a full figured guy, this is a 37 inch waist strap. Most people uh, don't know where their real waist is. I could tell you flat out, this is not gonna fit you if you have bigger than a 37 inch waist. And um, the other thing that was kind of disconcerting is this, when I got the pack, it doesn't come with any instructions. It was literally like this. So if you pulled, the strap is just gonna come out. Now, if you don't know what you're doing, that's gonna be a problem, right? You're gonna think it broke or something, but simple solution is just go through the buckle like this and then just come back over again through the other loop. And if you do that, tighten it up, then it's not gonna go anywhere. I'm pulling really hard. But again, 
there's no instructions. So how are you going to know to do that? You're not. So this webbing, I'll roll in a shot of uh, this. It is not Molly. So when I went to go ahead and attach my knife to it, I could only get in one loop. I couldn't get in both. And the strength of Molly is being able to weave in and out uh, to, um, to get strength from more than one spot. And so your stuff doesn't flop around. These are not Molly either. They're just straps. So I don't know what you would do with them. I don't really have any use for it. Like I said, for $30, I think that they, uh, you know, they have a home run. Everybody seems to love them, but it's not going to work for me. There's just too many things that are a deal killer and the pack is going back. Uh, thank you, Amazon. Uh, we will, if you have any uh, comments, please put them in the comments below. If you're interested in these packs, there will be a link in the description uh, to my Amazon store. It does help the channel when you click on that. I'll have a link to the Roaring Fire gear and also some other uh, things that I've shown in this video and other things that uh, we're going to review in the future. So there you have it. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Thanks for watching. Check the description for the links below, and we'll see you in the next one.